My name is Pastor Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockway Cathedral. Uh, welcome, welcome to our Sunday service. Welcome to our Sunday service. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Our foundational scripture is Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. We at the Rockway Cathedral say we're building God's kingdom in you. Be blessed. It's October 6th, 2024. Welcome to online worship at the Rockaway Cathedral. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Whether you're just having a look or seeking a place to worship, we are delighted to have you here. And though we may not be able to meet together physically, that is not going to stop us from rallying together spiritually. Join us online for a time of worship and a message from Pastor Marlon Curtin. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for meeting us in this place today. Speak to our hearts today. Speak to our minds today. Alter the course of our life today. Let us walk not by sight, but by faith. Let us walk not by sight, but by faith. Let's bless all those that minister today. Keep everyone safe that's on their way and bring us home back safely tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give everyone some praise. Today's scripture of the day is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 in the King James Version. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay, so we're going to hear from our psalmist, Sister Tiana Hall, from the Great Allen Cathedral of New York. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody ought to praise the Lord. Thank you for another opportunity to stand before you, but to worship God is most important. And I pray that my worship is pleasing to God and comfortable for you to join in and worship God along with me. We can start. Joy, take joy, 
just try to attack you with, with worries and, 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 and mental issues. You just got to know that at the end of the day, we will bless the Lord. So, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. With a heart of Thanksgiving with a heart of, with a heart of. 
to get the connection. You're supposed to show them God's love. So I'm asking you right now to walk over to somebody you didn't walk in the building with and give them a hug. with 
words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. For it is God's will that every need in this house be supplied. So guess what? If nobody told you, if nobody tells you for the rest of the week, I want you to know something. You are important to me. I need you to survive. This week, pray for each other and say, you are important to me. I need you to survive. That's what God wants y'all to know. And welcoming him. Yes. Understand this. Yes. That whatever comes our way this week, whoever's name is dropped in your spirit, pray for them. Because there is a need that God dropped their name. Amen. And you need them just like they need you. Today is their day. Tomorrow is yours. As sisters and brothers in Christ, let's start to come together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Rockaway Cathedral, building God's kingdom in you. Pastor Marlon Curtin would love for you to come and worship with us at his in-person service and communion held on Sunday, October 27th at 3 p.m. Join us at Arvern Pilgrim Church, 74-16 Beach Channel Drive in Arvern, New York, 11693. We hope to see you there. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to our service today. So now we prepare for the Holy Communion. Do we have that? This is a communion Sunday. It should be posted. So there's going to be some readings, some things I will read, and some things we will read together. Some things I will read, and then some things we will read together. Um, I will, I guess, let you know which one is which before it's being read. First would be the Apostles' Creed, which we will read together. And I was told to slow down. I read very, very quickly. So I thought it was just people from the church, but when I was in court the other day, the judge said, slow down. The jury can't follow you. So let's read together as best as I can. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Church Universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the pastor shall say, let your light so shine. And by the way, if you need to sit, you can sit, because we'll be reading for a while. The pastor shall say, let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. The pastor shall say, lay not up for yourselves, treasures upon earth where moth and rust up corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal then the pastor shall say ye, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life 
following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this, this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession, Almighty God. And we say together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men and women, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Then the pastor shall say, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who thy great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them, that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto thee. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from, from all of our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring to us everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The pastor shall say, Almighty God, unto whom, all, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, uh, we can start giving out the elements. You could remain in your seats as uh, you should receive the elements. I will read and then stop at the appropriate time. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and that instituted in his holy gospel, command us to continue with the perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, the remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. The Rockaway Cathedral is a nonprofit organization that is seeking to win souls for the Lord in the far Rockaway community. We especially want to make a difference in the lives of those who are often disenfranchised. However, we need your support to get there. Your act of kindness can be a lifesaver for someone. Remember, richness is not necessary, but willingness is. Please visit our website at www.therockawaycathedral.com. Click on the blue Donate tab at the bottom of the page, then click Make a Donation. We are also asking that you continue to support us by viewing our service once a week. We're now on Cash App. You can send your donations to cash tag Rockaway Cathedral. You can also donate at our website, www.therockawaycathedral.com. We thank you for your partnership and continued support. So welcome, my name is Pastor Marlon. Uh, this is the uh, Rock and Wake Cathedral live in person service. Thank you all for being here. Uh, today's message will be called Choices. Today's message will be called Choices. It's about walking by faith and not by sight. So now we'll read the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So thank you all for being here. Um, I think now we're going to have one more selection from our guest songs, uh, Sister Hall, and then we'll hear a word. Amen? Sister Hall. Yes, I will worship 
after being God's word. <laughs> so last week we talked about the lake of fire <laughs> and how uh, hopefully this week will be a bit different. We're going to be talking about walking by faith. The scripture can be found in Genesis chapter 16 verses 1 to 5. Genesis chapter 16 verses 1 to 5. Today's message is called choices. Today's message is called choices. We're going to read from the Christian Standard Bible. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis, the book of beginnings, part of the world of Moses. The book of beginnings. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, verse, starting with verse 1. I'll have to read along with you. Abram's wife Sarai had not born any children for him, but she was owned, but she owned an Egyptian slave named Hagar. Verse 2. Sarai said to Abram, Since the Lord has prevented me from bearing children, go to my slave, perhaps through her, I can build a family. And Abram agreed to what Sarai said. Verse 3, so Abram's wife Sarai took Hagar, her Egyptian slave, and gave her to her husband Abram as a wife for him. This happened after Abram had lived in the land of Canaan ten years. Verse 4, he slept with Hagar and she became pregnant. When she realized that she was pregnant, she treated her mistress with contempt. Verse 5, then Sarai said to Abram, you are responsible for my suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and ever since she saw that, she was pregnant. She was treated with contempt. May the Lord judge between me and you. So far the scripture. Mm -hmm. Lord, speak through your servant today and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. So there's a, I like to watch a movie, maybe too many movies. And by the way, if we talk about a movie or a book, doesn't mean that we're endorsing what's in the movie or the book. But there's a movie called The Matrix. The Matrix. Starring Hugo Weaving as Agent Smith. Smith, Lawrence Fishburne as Morpheus, Carrie Ann Moss as Trinity, and Keanu Reeves as Neo. It's a movie about a guy who was living an ordinary life. He's a computer programmer. But he always he felt that there was something missing in his life, felt that there was other things going on that he was missing out on that the life that he had wasn't all there was. There's got to be more to this. He's, he's a man who works on a regular basis. He helps his landlady with her garbage, living an ordinary man, living an ordinary life. But then he's approached, he's recruited by a group of people who turn out to be rebels. They turn out to be in this fight between humanity and machines. So at some point, he's in a room with them. He's in a room with them. And he's given, somebody opens their hand and has one pill, opens another hand, another pill. The blue pill, if he takes the blue pill, he continues the life that he has as a programmer, as a man who's nice to his landlady. The red pill says he takes him down a rabbit hole. He starts a completely new life, sort of chasing the things that he believes he's missing. The Matrix. Matrix is on all sorts of platforms. At this point, I'm supposed to read the scripture again. If you could pull up verse 5, and Genesis 16, verse 5. Verse 5, then Sarai said to Abram, you are responsible for my suffering. I put my slave in your arms, 
And ever since she saw that she was pregnant, she is treated me with contempt. And the Lord just between me and you. Point one is called the red pill. Point one is called the red pill. So the, the blue pill represents living life the way he normally lives it. And the red pill is a life, the life dreamed about. The life unlived. So the first thing that happens is he's met with this group of rebels. He's on his computer, gets a message from them. What's this? He checks it out. He, he opens the door, and by the way, I forgot to mention, he, he's a part I guess he's a part time drug dealer. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy comes to, you know, he has a normal job and he does stuff on the side. So back then they call it the illegal program. So he's selling illegal programs. The guy comes to the door. The woman he's with has another message from this underground group. He goes to a party, inviting him to a party. He goes to the club, he goes to the party, approached by another member of this underground group. Don't you, aren't you tired of the life you're living? Don't you think that there's something else out there? And then next thing you know, he's in the room and offered the two choices. The underground group, in many respects, is like the church. The underground group is the church. There are people in the society that are just living their lives. But we in the church, we think that there's something more than going to Harvard. There's more than going to the army. There's more to life than taking out your landlady's garbage. There's a realm, a thing that we desire. It's, it's a connection. It's a relationship with God. It, it, in some ways, yes, it's about salvation. Yes, it's about deliverance. But somehow, living the life in the body of Christ is different than living the life without Jesus. You, you could have the same neighbor, right? You could have your cubicle neighbor, but your life, your, your, the way you think about it, your perspective in life is different. So this small group of rebels... They, they surrounded him, they worked with him, they were friendly with him because they were trying to bring him out of the life that he was in. And then he meets a guy named Morpheus, took him by Lawrence Fishburne. And Morpheus starts saying all these things about him. Don't you know you have these powers? Don't you know you have this ability? You are, I keep calling him the one. And Morpheus represents the pastor of that church. When you come to church, Yes, you have this relationship with people who are believers, the relationship with your teammates, the relationship with people that you do things with, but the pastor speaks into your life. And Morpheus was able to see things that Neo could not see about himself. Morpheus was able to see things in Neo that Neo could not see about himself. And that's, that's what it's like. That's what it's like to live a life different than your neighbor, different than your cubicle mate, because you have around you people who are thinking about things differently, and you have a man or woman of God that can speak into your life and show you things about yourself, show you things about your potential, show you things about your future that you did not even know existed. This is the choice offered to Neo, but it's up to you. You, you could live the life that you've always lived. You could live the life that your cubicle mate lives. You could live the life that your neighbor lives. Or you could choose to live by faith. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Point two. Call it the triangle. So you have this family... You know, you have Abram called out from his community, called away from his family, brings his wife with him. And they're in this land now 10 years. It, it took some faith for him to walk away from everything he knew about, from his family and all of his friends and the community that he was in. It took some faith in the beat, but here they are in the land. 10 years, no child. Yeah, God has called him out of the place that he was in, we, we now know that there to be Iraq. And he was now in the promised land, which is, you know, we know where that is now. But, but no child. 
and they're looking at each other. What's going on? Why, why can't we have this child? Why, why aren't we seeing the rest of what the Lord has for us? We've left the land, yes. We're in this community, yes. We are blessed beyond belief, yes. We have all these servants, yes. We now have protection from our enemies, yes. The Lord has shown himself to be mighty in our lives, but we don't have the thing that he's promised. We don't have anybody to lead this to. Yes, we're blessed. Yes, God has, has, has met us where we are, but we don't have anybody to lead it to. And one of the things about this, this service, this scripture, you know, you could look at it a particular way. You could look at it as if somehow they sinned by getting involved in this triangle. So, you know, you could say, well, you know, you don't want to wait to get married so you have a child. You don't want to, you young man, you go into a neighborhood, you feel you need protection, so you join a gang. But that, that's not what this service is about. It's not about the choice that they made. It's not a sin. This is not about you choosing to live like the world or not. No, this is not a sin. It, it, and according to the commentary, it's typical if you have the mistress of the house who could not have kids. She would often employ her servant to have child, a child for them, and they would raise that child as their own. How do we know that's true? You've heard of Jacob? How many sons did Jacob have? Twelve. How many were from Leah? How many were from Rachel? Not all twelve. Some of the children of Jacob were by his servants, and they raised those kids as their own. So what Abram and Sarah agreed to do was typical at the time. So it's not about sin. It's about deciding. And this is one thing that they did not decide. They wanted to live the ordinary life. They wanted to live in a way that they knew how to live. When you're 90 years old and 100 years old, 98 years old, why would you... It, it, it's not normal to think that the Lord could give you a child when you're in your 90s and she's in her 80s. That's not normal. So the normal thing to do would be to employ your servant, have a child, and raise that child as your own, which is what people in their position normally do. But to take the red pill, to live by faith, means to stand on the promises of God. The same God who brought you out from Haran. The same God that protected your journey from there. The same God that protected you when you messed around and said in front of Pharaoh, that's my sister. The same God that protected you when you said the same thing to Abimelech in the land of Canaan. That God that protected you out of Egypt, protected you from the Philistines, brought you from your home, and gave them incalculable wealth can also bless you with this child. It, it doesn't have to be something that makes sense to you. It doesn't have to be something that you understand logically, understand by using math or science. It's it's what you call living by faith. So so you, they chose in this instance to live the ordinary life, to do things the way everybody normally does it because it makes sense to them. It doesn't make sense for a 90 plus year old man and an 80 plus year old woman to have a child. But, but the Lord is speaking to you today. You who are in the community of rebels called the church. You who have a bishop speaking over your life every week. You from the Rock of Cathedral who have a pastor speaking over you every week. It's time to understand who God has made you to be. Don't just live life ordinary. It's not about sin versus not sin. It's about do you want to live the red pill life or the blue pill life? Do you want to live a life that's not ordinary? Do you want to understand who the Lord has made you to be? The Lord wants more from you. The Lord wants to show you who he's made you to be. The Lord wants to bring you out from where you are to some other place. You are called to live a life extraordinary. If you look at the book of Hebrews, Who's in the book of Hebrews living a life of faith? It's Abraham and Sarah. Because they thought it not robbery to live according to the promises of God. After they made this choice, 
you judge between me and you. Ultimately, in the next chapter, the Lord reaffirmed his promise to them. Reaffirmed that, no, it's from Sarah. That's where the promise will come. That's the child of promise, not from Hagar. Yes, he will be blessed, yes, he will be taken care of, but the child of promise, the red pill lad, living by faith. No, it's not the ordinary way. You only find it if you live and walk according to the faith. That's the good news for you today. Live the life extraordinary. Live by faith. Give the Lord some praise for that. Point three, walking by faith. You can come to church every week and benefit from the close relationship that you all develop here in church. That by itself is a benefit. Coming to church by itself, aligning yourself with people who think differently, that by itself is not only is it commanded by God, but it is beneficial by itself. But 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 I just want to encourage you that there's a another life out there. The Lord, just like the Lord spoke to Abram in the next chapter about what he was going to do to Sodom and Gomorrah, just like the Lord spoke to Abram about what he was going to do with his own wife, that this time next year, Sarah will have a child. She laughed, but they believed together. And the Lord showed them, right, by giving them a son, Isaac. This is what it means to walk by faith. Some, some of you, the Lord has given you a call to the ministry. Some of you are called to preach. Some of you are called to prophesy. Some of you are called to sing. Some of you are called to dance. Some of you are called to be administrators. Maybe that's, I don't know what the calling is. I don't know what the Lord has called you to do, but, but there's a place in God that is different than the way we normally think about things. No 90 plus year old man. An 80 plus year old woman would ever think about having a child. And how is it that me, Lord, I'm in my 50s now. I'm in my 60s now. I got three kids now. I got grandkids now. You call me to be a what? You want to be, that's in me? How could that be in me? No, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what your training is. That God will open up the doors to your training, to your mentors. Two of the people in the in that field that he's called you to do. The issue is not whether or not it's true. The issue is what what am I going to do about it once I hear from God? The Lord is speaking to people today. Some of you are called to do more in the body. Some of you are called to start that business. Some of you are called to get elevated in your own uh, job. Some of you are called to stay in that job and to do better at that job. Whatever, some of you are called for renting to be homeowners. Some of you are homeowners can buy another home and then rent that out. I, I don't know what the Lord has called you to do, but there's a place just like these people, right? There's a place in God where you can walk and live by faith. Where you can walk and live by faith. What you're doing now is not a sin. You're not sinning by staying where you are. You're not sinning by living a relatively ordinary life. It's not bad. You're not, nothing like that is true, but there's a place for you. There's a place for you beyond where you are. There's a place for you beyond what you think about life. There's a place for you beyond how you grew up. What's your situation? Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter your BMI. Doesn't matter your zip code. There's a place in God for you that can take you from where you are to where you need to be. Take that red pill life. Walk in faith. Walk without knowing exactly where you're going. Walk without knowing exactly how you're going to pay for it. Walk without knowing who your mentor is going to be because the Lord will show you your mentor, will give you the finances, will give you the credentials that you need to do that thing that he's called you to do, live the red pill life. Live the, yeah, yeah, Leo was a drug dealer on the side. Yeah, you may have a habit on the side that's not good. 
You may be addicted to this, addicted to that. Doesn't matter. The call was made from where, from where you are. From where you are, the Lord has called you. Yes, yeah, you got a bad habit. Yes, I don't have that thing in my backpack. No, I don't have the credentials. No, I don't have the money. No, I don't have the mental. But the Lord has still called you. You're a 90 year old man looking to have a child. As unlikely as it is, that's what you call living by faith. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. That's it. You're here today, this will broadcast. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. You've never accepted Him as Lord and Savior. If that's you, pray this prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I know you came for me. I know you live for me. I know you died for me. And on the third day, you rose again from the dead. Today, I confess that you are Lord, and I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead. Therefore, today, I'm saved. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. We long to serve and please you in all we say and do. Help us to hide your word in our hearts and to use it as a guide unto our path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in God's grace until we meet again for Sunday service. And be sure to check out our website for more information about our ministry. God bless you. And remember, you're dismissed from this service, but never dismissed from God's presence.